when we invest money in stock market we pay charges indirectly or directly and do you know we actually pay taxes when we invest money in stock market so in this video which is part 5 stock market series we are going to understand the charges and the taxes which we are paying when we invest money in stock market so hello and welcome back to freedom english channel this is sanara So this is part five of stock market series, and we are going to understand the charges and the taxes which are associated with the money when we invest it in stock market. But before I start with that, if you have missed the first four parts, which is in part one we have covered the basics of stock market, in part two we have understood the terminologies, in part three we have found out few ways in which we can select the best company to invest the money, and part four we have understood the mistakes. as an investor which we should avoid and in part 5 we are going to understand the charges and the taxes so all the part 4 links are given in the description if you have not watched it till now i would request you to watch it because this is the foundation of stock market so we are actually paying nine types of charges number 1 demat and trading account opening charges so we in order to invest in stock market will need this demat and trading account and in order to open the demat and trading account we have to use certain platforms because we are using the services from these platforms we have to pay them commission and that commission is actually the opening charges so without demat and trading account we cannot invest in stock market if you are wondering what is this demat and trading account i'll tell you in simple words demat account demat account is nothing but the place where the shares are electronically stored in before time which means the previous time the shares were actually physical in form which means we can see them and touch them and feel them which were in paper form but now everything is digitally made and stored so we need a place to store it right so that is called the demat account and so trading account is nothing but the account which is used in order to sell and buy these shares so basically without this demat and trading account we cannot invest in stock market and the platforms which i was speaking about includes i would say i'll name a few here Zeroda, Grow, Upstock, Paytm Money, they have the commissions, which is actually the opening charges, and it differs. Few platforms charges zero, and few platforms charges a certain amount of money. I'll show you some examples in a board right now. Grow, Angel One charges zero, Zeroda charges two hundred rupees, Paytm Money charges two hundred, Upstock charges two forty nine. So, if you can use Grow and Angel Money. you can open this demat and trading account with zero charges second one account maintenance charge so once you have opened an account with a specific platform you actually have to pay an annual maintenance charge that is called the account maintenance charge and we cannot escape from not paying this charge we have to pay and it is a mandatory charge and again platform to platform it differs so i again will show you few examples in a board see it grow charges zero paytm money charges zero upstock charges zero zero the charges 300 rupees and angel one charges 240 rupees third charge is brokerage we are actually paying a certain amount in order to open the demat and trading account using a platform but again we are using the same platform and investing in stock market that cannot be a free service correct so we have to pay these brokers the brokers means the platforms which is our upstock paytm money grow anything are the brokers so when we pay them the commission that is called brokerage and this brokerage is of three types number one delivery which means we are holding the stock or the share for more than a day which is two days three days four days one year five year 10 years long term second one is intraday it is a trading so we buy and sell shares on the same day and the third one is future and options which in detail we'll see in another video as of now you can just remember this so basically the brokerage is of three types and i will compare two three platforms for you through a screen recording so you can understand how these charges differ okay now i have opened zeroda so brokerage the first line clearly states that for equity delivery they charge zero It's zero brokerage when it comes to intraday the 0.03% or rupees 20 on the order whichever is low and futures it is 0.03% or 20 whichever is low on the order and the options it is flat 20 rupees on the order so next one you are going to see is paytm money here you can say again the delivery is zero brokerage intraday is 10 and future and option is 10 again and the next one is grow here you can see equity brokerage is 20 or 0.05 percentage as per the order whichever is lower and future and options brokerage is 20 as per the order 
So now we have understood we have to pay a certain amount of commission to the platforms or the brokers using which we are investing in stock market and that commission is called brokerage and there are three different types which is delivery, intraday and switch run options and we have seen few examples as well. Fourth one is securities transaction charges and since this is paid directly to the central government, it is same in all platforms. So as of now, I'll show you Zeroda and we can see how it differs from one type of uh, services to other type of services. So you can see here STT or CTT on equity delivery it's 0.1% on buy and sell when it comes to intraday it is 0.025 percentage on selling side only and on futures again it is 0.01 percentage on selling side only and on options it is 0.05 percentage on selling side only so this is the charges which has been charged on every platform because this charge directly goes to the central government fifth one is exchange transaction charges in india what are the exchanges NSE, National Stock Exchange and BSE, Bombay Stock Exchange. So, in order to run these exchanges, they need funds. And we as public, since we use their services as well, we are paying them as charges. So, let me again through a screen recording from Zeroda show you what are the charges are. And this is also same in all platforms because NSE and BSE is involved. As you can see, I have opened Zeroda again. And the transaction charges for NSE in delivery is 0.00345%. And BAC is 0.00375%. And intraday, NSE is same and BAC is also same, which is 0.00345% and 0.00375%. And when it comes to futures, it is 0.002% in NSE. And options is also NSE is 0.053%. Sixth one is SEBI charges. We all know SEBI is a regulatory body and it takes care of the stock market. Which in sense, it takes care that no fraudulent activities or anything wrong happens in stock market. So, they need funds to run SEBI as well, right? So, we as public again are utilizing the services, so are paying charges here. Again, I'll show you the SEBI charges which we pay on using different types of services. And again, it is same on all platforms because SEBI is involved. And now we'll watch it through Zeroda. As you can see, I have opened Zeroda and SEBI charges for delivery is rupees 10 per crore plus GST. When it comes to intraday, futures and options, it is same, which is rupees 10 per crore plus GST charges. Seventh charge which we pay is depository participant charge, which is DP charges. This applies only on delivery, only during selling and only once in a day. And the charge which they charge here is 13.5 INR, which is Indian rupees plus GST. Eighth one is stamp duty. This also directly goes to the central government. So it is same in all platforms. Again, with the help of Zeroda, we will understand the stamp duty for different services which we can avail from the platform. So I have opened Zeroda again and the stamp charges for equity delivery is 0.015% or 1500 rupees per crore on buy side. Which means when we are buying, we pay this. And when it comes to intraday, it is 0.003% or 300 per crore on buy side. Again, only on buying side. Future and options is also on buying side and in future it is 0.02% or 200 per crore and when it comes to options it is 0.003% or 300 per crore but everything is only on buy side and this is the stamp charges. The last and nine charge which we pay here is GST. Again I'll open Zerodo for you. You will understand on which services GST is living. So as you can see GST applies on brokerage, SEBI charges and transaction charges and that is 18%. It is same for delivery, intraday, future and options and it is same in all platforms because it is GST. So now we have understood that there are 9 charges. Now let us see a screen recording in which we are going to do a small calculation. So now I have opened Grow Brokerage Calculator and in quantity of the stocks I have given 1 share. So buy price per share is 1000, sell price per share is 1500. So the turnover here is 2500 which means I have bought it for 1000, I have sold it for 1500 and the turnover is the buy price plus sell price. So 1000 plus 1500 which is equal to 2500 and the profit which I have made is 500. Charges is 4.73 as you can see. So now let us break down the charges and understand the thing which we have just covered before, the 9 charges. As you can see, growth charges is 1.25. Non-growth charges is 3.48. So security transaction tax, which is STT, is 3 rupees. Exchange charges, which is NSE and BSE charges, is 0.09. 
SEBI turnover fees, which is the SEBI charge is zero here. GST is 0.24, stamp duty is 0.15. So the profit altogether is 500 minus the charges, which is 4.73, which is equal to 495.27. Now let us just check the growth charges. It is 0.05 percentage, correct? So 2,500 into 0.05 percentage is equal to 1.25. And so the growth charges here is 1.25, which is perfect. So till now we have understood the nine charges and we have also seen a small example through screen recording. Now let us understand the taxes which we have to pay when it comes to investing money in stock market. So here there are two types of taxes. One, the taxes which we pay on the gains and the second, the taxes which we pay on the dividend. Speaking about the gains, it is also divided into two types and that is long-term capital gain and short-term capital gain. Let us understand the difference first. When it comes to the short-term capital gain, if we have bought some shares and we have sold the shares before one year and we make some profit or gain out of it, which means we have got returns, that is considered to be a short-term capital gain. So if you're buying shares, you're holding the shares for more than a year, and you sell it and you make profit out of it, which means you're making gains out of it or returns out of it, that is considered to be long-term capital gain. The taxes which you pay on the short-term capital gain are called short-term capital gain tax and the tax which you pay on the long-term capital gain are considered to be the long-term capital gain tax. I will give you an example here. I have 1 lakh. I have invested this 1 lakh in stock market and that 1 lakh grows into 1 lakh 10,000. I have sold the shares in 2 or 3 months before 1 year. So this is actually a short-term capital gain and the gain which I have got here is 10,000. So I have to pay 15 percentage on the 10,000 which I have gained and this is short-term capital gain tax which is 15 percentage. Speaking about the long-term capital gain tax, let us assume I had the same 1 lakh, I invested it in stock market, I waited for one and a half year or two years maybe and it has grown into 1 lakh 50,000. So here, my gain is a long-term capital gain because I have held the stocks or the shares for more than a year. And the amount or the percentage of tax which I have to pay here is 10 percentage on the 50,000 which I have made. And when it comes to long-term capital gain, you do not pay tax up to 1 lakh. So this is the difference between the short-term capital gain and the long-term capital gain. What it is, if it is short-term, you would have bought and sold your stocks within one year. If you extend one year, it becomes long-term. So the gain what you gain here and depending on the gain you will be paying your taxes. For the short term it is 15% and for the long term it is 10%. And the next type of tax which you are going to pay in stock market is dividend tax. What is dividend? When you have or when you hold the shares of a specific company, when they make profit they pay the shareholders through dividends, correct? So according to your tax slab, you have to pay tax on the dividends which you receive every year. So what are the two types of taxes in stock market? Number one tax on the gains which you have made and number two tax on the dividend distribution. So with this we have understood what are the nine types of charges which we have to pay if we invest in stock market and the taxes which we have to pay when we invest in stock market. With this point part five comes to an end. I believe you have got a clear idea about the charges and the taxes which are associated with the stock market investing. If you like this video please go ahead give a thumbs up and if you believe that it will be beneficial for others please go ahead and share. And in case if you're not subscribed to our channel, subscribe our channel and click the bell icon. And Freedom App, if you want to know more about stock market, in-depth knowledge, we have a complete 9-hour course on stock market itself. So I'm giving you the glimpse of everything here. If you want to get in-depth knowledge, you should go ahead, install our Freedom App and register your name right away. Not only stock market and personal finance, you have mutual funds, you have loans, insurance, what not. How to manage money, how to make money and how to get rich. Everything is covered in personal finance. You have business, mentors are there who are going to train you on their business, take you through their life journey and teach you how you can build profitable business from your side and farming. So we have 900 plus courses and so many mentors who have shared their life experience with us and they all are successful and they have started from the scratch. So if you're someone thinking that how am I going to start this and where am I going to see myself in another 5 or 10 years, I would suggest you to install the Freedom App now, register your name and learn everything, implement it in your life and change your life just like that. With this point, my video comes to an end. I'll see you again in the next part. Until then, you guys take care and bye-bye.